a day may come when the courage of men fails, when we forsake our friends and break all bonds of fellowship. But it is not this day. An hour of wolves and shattered shields when the age of men comes crashing down. But it is not this day. This day we fight by all that you hold dear on this good earth. I bid you stand, men of the West! Hello, everybody. I'm The Last Pretender, and welcome to another episode of our M.A. Man Redemption series. Uh, and today, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna sound the drums of war. Something like that. Uh, let's flip those dogs. Uh, and, uh... Uh, we're gonna have our first bet, uh, battle against Aramor. So, and, uh, I'm a genius. And so, who let the dogs out? Uh, it was indeed Aramor, as they're gonna go ahead and attack us. Now, in the province that they attack us, one thing I would like to preface, which I don't think I mentioned in the last episode, is the reason that I didn't put a whole bunch of province defense into that province is because it's terrible. It's really bad province defense there. So, Anyway, our Conjuration got done. So that's pretty cool. So we've got Conjuration 5 now, so we're going to be able to cast Howl. Uh, we'll see how relevant that'll be after this battle. But uh, we've got some construction trucking along. Uh, construction 4 is, 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 uh, is going to be researched pretty soon, which is going to be helpful for us. Uh, Alms claimed another throne, so good for him. Lots of sight searching. Nope, nope, nope. Bird Song Tower, nice. Uh... I don't want to go too far. Okay. Yep. Boiling bog. Nice. Uh, and as you can see, uh, wolf oak. Very nice. So, finding lots of magic sites, kicking a lot of butt. Now, big thing, Grace Kelly is with us, everybody. Whew, what a fox. Um, so we're pretty stoked that uh, she's a friend of all, you know? And she's broken free. She's... Uh, <laughs> Princess of Discipline? Mm. I mean, listen, that's how she rolls. Don't judge her. All right? It's her kink. So, uh, we did get an infiltration into Jotun. We tried to infiltrate Jotunheim, and we did not succeed. There's just too much stuff there. So we're very sad about that. And uh, we get to see some battles. So, I believe it's around this time that... Ulm and, uh, and Marin y'all go to war with each other. So, yeah. So, war is, has broken out amongst them as well. Um, and uh, anything cool happening? Jeez, look at this army from Marin, y'all. What's their bless? I feel like I remember thinking their bless was not that hot. Uh, attack, magic weapon, shock resist, fire resist, reinvigoration. Penetration bonus is an interesting pick. That's a lot of astral he must have. You have to have like eight Astro or something to have magic weapons and pen bonus, don't you? That's a lot. Blood Surge is good. Uh, so that's kind of what he's got going on in his life. Um, yeah. There's really nothing here. But, god, look at that army. And then he's got all these crossbows. Ugh. And look at all these mages he's got. Jeez. Okay. But that's, uh, that's what happened there. It's just a smith who got killed. Oh, did he get shot by a crossbow? No, High Inquisitor killed him. I must have, like, mind burned him or soul slayed him. Um, I went and retook that province. Uh, they got taken over by the villains, if you'll recall from last episode. I don't know. I, there was a couple of random events that just took over stuff. We get another one, which is pretty freaking cool. Um, the, oh, we, we beat this? How does this work? This is a big, annoying force. Okay. Let's see. Uh, no, just no, no, don't do that. It's too fast. Let's see. Wow. Oh, these things only have one HP. That's right. These are phantasmal beasts. So, uh, my uh, my my brave cavalry do hold and defend the people of its land from imaginary creatures. So good for them. Uh. <laughs> Anyway, 
Uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and watch the uh, the battle. So, uh, this is a big spooky army, and this is a lot of lickers. It's somewhere in the realm of like sixty, and he's got some some of these uh, knights of the unholy sepulcher. So, very terrifying. Some chaff. Now, so a couple things. So first thing I think is he should have put his lictors in the front, um, and hope that his chaff will soak up some of my spells. And because he's going to want his lictors to get in combat as quickly as possible, and not just have his chaff get slaughtered, uh, is my suspicion. As you can see, I've got a. I'm going to have four of uh, four of my mothers becoming communion slaves, and all the rest of them. Well, three of my mothers and my one daughter becoming uh, communion slaves, and then uh, chorus slaves, and then one of them, and then the rest of them become chorus masters. The reason being is that banishment doesn't cost any fatigue. So all that will happen is just all my people who communion master will just have a plus two to their uh, their priest level. So that'll be level three priests, which is you know a lot better. Same thing with this dude. Um, Sign wolf is here. Yeah, he's gonna go ahead and cast divine blessing. I don't know why he's hurt, but he is for some reason. Anyway. Uh, he's got a little bit of reinvigoration, which is going to be nice on all my units, because he, um, because of the throne I claimed. And yeah, I got a whole bunch of knights. Not a lot else. Um, one thing to watch that's going to be amusing is this dude. My boy, uh, A. Jelric. He's going to go ahead and, 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 and be a hero. So, let's go ahead and watch the battle. So yeah, my banishments are coming in, and it's going to hurt their, their chaff a lot. It, it'll do, like, very little to his lictors. Yeah, you can see a lot of spells coming down. A lot of damage getting done. You can see huge damage coming in from the banishments. Uh, the Ravenous Swarm has been cast, and it's going to start bouncing around. Yeah, like over here and stuff. So I hit. Let's see if we can spot it. It hits. Uh, I don't know. I don't see it. But, uh, yeah. We've got a big clash in the middle here. Um, I wanted my knights to kind of be a little bit slower behind my, my landless knights. My knights of Avalon. Here we go. But yeah, you can see, like, boom, right here. Um, a little cluster of knights just got chunked. Lictors got chunked 22, and there was another one that I think that got hit there, too. So, here's a Jailric being a brave and noble hero. And you can see, like, my knights just don't. They don't cut it against this. They're just going to get carved up. Yeah, boom. You see they're just getting chopped up. Now, what I find really amusing in this battle is A.G. Elric will have himself a mighty duel with the hero Headless the Censor. Um, and, uh, yeah. You can see, like, uh, right there, a big pop went off and killed a bunch of stuff. Let's see how this battle goes. It's a mighty duel. And, uh, yeah, basically, uh, Ajor got hit one time, had his arm cut off, and he's gonna scream and run away. Meanwhile, we're all gonna bunch around these lictors who are gonna do super damage. You can see right there, boom. Ravenous Swarm coming in big. Let's see if we can catch it again. So you see, it's just boom. It's just doing huge amounts of damage, and, like, this is one of his, uh, one of his heroes, too. His prophet is here, interestingly enough. Right here. So, this is his main force, and, uh, yeah, look at this. You can see some of my landless knights are running around in circles. You can see, um, see, that wasn't a very good ravenous swarm, but it pops on. My guys are getting some damage in, uh, some of it from, uh, all these banishments, and some of it just from having a wall of knights just pushing in. Uh, over on this flank, uh, headless of... Uh, where was he? Oh, yeah. Oh, old Headless over here. He's come over to the main fight after having whipped my hero's butt and made him run away. Um, but boom, you saw that right there? See, look at that. 19, 24, 23. Just popping him hard. This dude's almost dead already with 2 HP left. Right, that's, that's Ravenous Swarm. But we've just got so many dudes. And with the Ravenous Swarm, it's just slowly chipping him down. See, you get another big hit right there that kills a handful of them. 
but we are losing major amounts of troops. Uh, now the ravenous form leeches onto his uh, his super fat. Cause he has unequal obesity. Yeah, his super fat uh, profit here. Yep. And it is a bloody one, but our boys do come out on top this time. So that's pretty swell. Um, see, we're hunting down some stragglers. The reason you see our guys turning these colors like this is because the uh, lictors have chill on them. So that's neat. Yeah, there it goes. As you see, it's just popping a few more guys and that sort of thing. We'll get one more off? I think it will. Uh, looks like it did something right here. But yeah, so we did win the battle. Uh, but at great cost. So if we take a look, we actually lost 119 troops, 57 knights of Avalon, and all, oh, not almost all, but 23 knights of man. Like, that is rough. That is very rough. Um, now we did kill, importantly, 41 of his lictors. And you can see almost all the kills are from his lictors. Um, we killed 41 of them, which is Probably a significant portion. Also important to note, we killed his prophet. His prophet died in that battle. Ravenous Swarm got to him. And eventually ate him up. Uh, so that's good news. Yeah, light militia and infantry, by the way. And militia is what you get. Light infantry and militia is what you get from uh, the province defense, which sucks. So I didn't really recruit him. Uh, but yeah, you can see the bloodbath that unfolded. Fortunately, none of my casters died. Uh, my mother's of Avalon did damage. Castellan did damage. Monks killing chaff. Kind of their job. Um, so yeah, so a big old win for me. I guess. Uh, the question is, is that... So we'll go ahead and look at some events. So yeah, one of my mothers got transformed into a pig. Uh, yeah, some, some cool more warriors that are fucking imaginary came out and attacked my people. And my people held again. Oh, I already talked about that. Uh, some of gold, lab, nature, got a, a fire sword. That's cool. Um, yeah. Okay, so so fortunately, I think this means that we're done with these crazy random events that are obnoxious. Um, and uh, I'm still sending Wilford in. He's going to go ahead and try and take this out. Uh, a jail rick. Um, uh, he's going to regrow his arm. <laughs> he's had a hard run. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and march my troops north. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I don't know why I'm doing this. Oh, that's right, because there's, there's water here. So I was pretty disappointed. I would have liked to have hunt down and killed the rest of his lictors, but I can't. Because, um, I mean, I think he probably still has um, a commander or something here to be able to lead these guys out. But there's a river here, so I can't cross. So I'm going to march everything up here. Jim the gym mule over here is going to hold on to a bunch of gems. We're going to move north. Um, now I am going to come up with a plan, but that's not going to happen yet. Uh, we still got lots of people casting spells. Uh, Grace Kelly's doing some research. Uh, Voice of Absolute's coming in. Um, all specs, hard specs, all those good things to find us lots of magic stuff. Um, if we take a look at, like, gym income, our gym income has gone up a whole bundle. Our research is doing pretty good. Uh, our army size took a little bit of a hit there, but we can see Airmores. Uh, also did not like this. And I think that um, that was a good bit. I think we killed quite a bit of his stuff. I think we killed quite a bit. I mean, the 40 lictors deaths was pretty good. I mean, it's a heck of a lot better than what you saw whenever uh, whenever um, Jotunheim attacked and just basically got slaughtered and killed almost no lictors. I think he killed, what, like six? Something like that. So, uh... Otherwise, uh, everything's going swell. Now, hopefully, Wilford is going to be able to take these 32 and reinforce. So that's going to be a pretty good pretty good boost. I mean, we did lose 100 freaking troops. Uh, Beotrix is going to go off and go try and grab some more troopers. Um, we're going to just try and recruit whatever. Um, but, yeah. That's how that goes. Um, fortunately, our infrastructure's up and looks pretty good. So we can produce units pretty quickly. 
Uh, we've got some some gnomes, and they're casting gnome lore to try and find some earth gems. We're getting three a turn, so that's nice. Um, and otherwise, everything else is pretty bang -orang. Uh We won a big battle. Um, Osmond did not did not get to infiltrate Jotunheim, but I guess he's going to try again. Um, in the meantime, we can see this colossal screw you army from Marignan is pushing into all. Colossal army. And he's got another army right here. It's very big. So, yeah. Serious news. Serious news. Um, anything else I super care about? You can see we got some decent scouting information. I haven't seen a lot from Van Hyde, so I don't know what's going on. Now, one thing that does happen, and I don't remember when it happens, but it happens somewhere in, in the turns that we're watching here, is that um, Ulm actually makes peace with Van Hyde. Ulm ends up negotiating a peace with Van Hyde to deal with the Marignan issue. So Ulm is going to pull back his armies from Van Hyde. So I don't, I have no idea what the state of Van Heim is. I guess I do know. I have a pretty strong idea, I guess, now I think about it. Right? Van Heim had a lot of money. Now he's got so-so money. Um, Statis has actually got more money than him now. Interesting. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Statis and Van Heim are both kind of small and kind of equal. And so they're going to end up fighting, just sort of brawling with each other. Kind of on equal, on equal ground, so... We'll see how that goes. We'll see if Marignan is going to be able to have a successful push. Uh, we'll see if we're going to be able to uh, to stop the, the long night from uh, consuming the world. Uh, yeah. That's kind of all I got going on right now. Uh, in any event, let's go ahead and hop on over to turn number 32. I'm trying really hard not to say in any event anymore. Because I, I actually looked at one of my older videos and I was like, I say in any event perpetually. Um, so, uh, a bunch of research gets done. We cast a bunch of sight-searching spells. We, uh, do we find a whole heap in lot? Not realistically. Um, our bard does not know more about Marignan. Uh, we end up retaking another province where we lose a good bit of troops, honestly, and we convert some troglodytes, so yippee for us. Um, so that's all good. Um, this is a, uh, a little battle that End has and does not win. How does he lose this battle? I don't know. Oh, I guess these yogis kill a bunch of stuff. What's this battle like? I don't remember this battle. Hmm. Magic duel. Wow. <laughs> Holy shoot. So you just cast a bunch of magic duels, huh? Interesting. Huh. Really? Wow. In doesn't win this? I guess these lions are pretty tough. Yeah, in the breaks. Huh. It's just not quite enough. In the gives a heck of a push. Really? Mind burn, huh? Wow. Well, that was uh, an interesting battle, and not a terribly cheap one. I mean, a good bit of gold got lost. I mean,. I mean, 11 of these guys? Jeez. It's over a thousand gold right there. Um, these priests are not really that big a deal. Like, two of these guys, not cheap. These yogis are whatever, pretty cheap, so that's probably why he did that. Uh, wow. Yeah, so a solid win for Bandar here. Uh, the, the province defense really coming through for him and then spamming out a bunch of magic duels, so... That's an interesting situation they got going on there. Let's see what's going on with Marignan and uh, nothing here. Okay, so Marignan is just going to take that. Black plate, nice. Some unrest, okay. 
Uh, one of my mugs got found. Oh. So. I should mention this. So I bought this dude off the, uh, off the mercenary market. And the reason is, is because uh, when making my god, I'd forgotten about the importance of Earth Astral. And so I'm going to make him forge a bunch of stuff. Like uh, crystal matrices uh, and crystal coins. So that's important. And it's at this point in time that uh, I realized that, oh my god, Grace Kelly's alive. So that I radically end up changing my game plan. So I'm not going to push into this military. I, mm, I think I could win this battle, but it would be a bloody one. So what I'm actually going to do is move my, my army up here to the north. With the plan being that they go here, then here, then here. Or something in that fashion. Uh, the reason being is I want to get the Thaumaturgy 6. At Thaumaturgy 6, I can get Wither Bones. So, Wither Bones is a level 3 death spell. And being that my god is now alive, uh, I'm going to have her forge a skull staff. And so she's going to be death 3. Then I will put her in a communion. A big one. Probably like, I think I go with 8. So that's going to give me a plus 3 to that. Um, so instead of doing 16 damage, it's going to do 22 damage. With a contested DRM roll. Um, so, uh, yeah, because, uh, she can, uh, she's not a spell singer, but because she's astral, she can form, she can become a communion master, and a chorus counts, basically. Someone's a chorus slave, that counts as a communion, and so she can do that. So that's gonna be pretty awesome. Uh, that's gonna really make, uh, our, our next battle against, uh, Aramor to be really helpful. At this point in time, Facia was just pleading with me to kill Aramor. I think he didn't really want to fight those lictors. Um, so, the plan is, is to try to get to Thaumaturgy 6. Once I'm at Thaumaturgy 6, I will have Wither Bones. Then, I will use Teleport, um, right there. I will then teleport my god on over to here, which it can reach from, from, from our cap. Uh, try and get her to teleport on over to here, and then just push into the cap and kill him. Now! Uh, there's two things I'm kind of hoping for. The first thing I'm hoping for is he doesn't have uh, Evocation 3. Uh, because he does have... I, 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 he's not going to have the Astral Mages that I think Aramor could summon. He's not going to have them. It's too early. And he's probably spent way too much of his Death Gem income on um, Lictors. So I'm doubtful he has that. I'm doubtful he has Evocation 3. I doubt he's been going for Evocation. Um... But if he gets evocation three, he can mind, he can he can magic duel me. Um, so those are concerns. Also, an obvious concern is uh, uh, foul vapors. But I don't think he's gonna have foul vapors. I mean, he might. But even if he does, I'm gonna cast poison ward to kind of dip out of that. Uh, also, I'm gonna be able to get Wilfred to go ahead and reinforce there. So that's gonna be quite helpful. Um, so yeah. So I'm probably gonna do a little dance to try and get my thaumaturgy up. Uh, so right now, yeah, she's forging a skull staff, casting more voice of Absus, making a crystal matrix, um, all kinds of very happy, very good stuff. So let's go ahead and hop over to turn number 23. I mean, 33. Boom. So, lots of voice of Absus, lots of horror specs getting cast. Uh, we find a couple things. I speak nice. She was great. Okay. So we're finding lots of magic sites. Doing a good job there. We do get a good infiltration on the Marignan, so we can kind of see what's going on there. Uh, we do fight off. Um, we retake our provinces. And uh, this is the main army that's moving north. Uh, no need to really see that. Uh, we see a big, gigantic screw you battle um, between this massive army and this massive army. So let's see how it goes. So crossbows happen. And you can see right here, lots of these clockwork horrors. Interesting choice. Interesting choice. Not sure how I feel about that, but. Now lots of fire elementals get summoned. Though I think you could have positioned them a lot better. Right now. But 
as you can see, uh, uh, which, what's it called? Um, I forget what the spell is called. It's just wreaking havoc. Iron, iron blizzard or whatever is just wreaking havoc on the crossbows. Um, now these sacreds are going to do okay. Now these clockwork horrors actually do surprisingly well because they have two attacks. They actually do surprisingly well against these, uh, these fire elements. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but these guys are going to cut through. Now at this point in time, we see the guardians. Oof. Interesting that he's got this guy. I'm not really sure how he has that. I'm not sure if this is a hero or what, but um, the guardians are going to just make just easy work of these things. And he's got a ton of them. Look at all this. That's a lot of guardians, man. And you can see the clockwork horrors are getting into the crossbows now. Like, this is all very bad. Oof. You can see, uh, yeah, these guys are casting, oh, now they're casting blade, blade wind. They've been casting, what, Iron Swarm or whatever? Or do you guys have? Yeah. Iron Blizzard, which is just doing huge damage. Yeah. You can see Maws of the Earth just got cast, it looks like. Oh, wow. It's Gift from Heaven, is it? I think. Um, yeah, the Clockwork Cores are still running around here. The back line has been wrecked. These dudes are gonna rush into the back, maybe, no. But yeah, these these guardians did some serious work. Whew. Oh, Marin, y'all. You really probably should have positioned your fire elementals better, I think. And um, yeah, your mages just needed to do more. They did not. So taking a look here at this battle, uh, this is super bad for Marin, y'all. Uh, now, admittedly, a lot of the Clockwork Horrors died, but, like, look at this. 65 kills for these Guardians. Now, the the Black Priests and the Acolytes got a lot of kills, but that's mainly... Th those kills are mainly, um, like, these crossbows. What I am curious about is if Arrowfend protects from Iron, Iron Blizzard. I'm not sure if it does. It might. Um, I'd have to check up on that. But yeah, I mean, both sides did lose a lot of stuff. I mean, 24 gardens is nothing to smear at, and all these clockwork horrors is, uh, is a costly, uh, thing. But like, oof, Marignan. Not great. Now, the good news is, is that if I end up having to fight Alm, I do have a nap three with them. But if I do have to fight Alm, uh... I don't, have, I don't really worry about sacreds. <laughs> sacreds aren't really a thing for me. So these guardians are not as big of a deal. They're still strong as, as fuck, right? I mean, they still hit like trains and that kind of stuff. But, you know, I don't mind that. And uh, also his guys have terrible magic resist. Is there some BS I can do to that? Almost certainly. What's their magic resist? Nine? Oof. What can I do with that? I don't know, I'd have to think about it. But there are certainly going to be some things that I can do to all if I end up having to go to war with them. But, uh, yeah, so that's a big swing against Marin, y'all. It's going to hurt him real bad. Um, uh, some unexpected events occur. So, Fertility Cult. Ah, hate that. Um, got another Black Steel Sword, some Air Gems. Got some more gems. Got some money. And this is annoying. Got a Skull Staff. <laughs> Like, I spent all my death gems to make a skull staff. I wanted to just summon a revenant and then just sight search, but no. Skull staff. Uh, so I, I made the skull staff and then immediately spawned one. So that's annoying. Um, uh, by the remaining army of this nonsense. But, I mean, it could be worse. Uh, one thing I am curious about is what is the blessing? Uh, what, what is your blessing here? Poison resist. Interesting. So they took Farcaster. Missile range. Uh, it's not surprising. Poison resist. Question. I'm a little curious. Did you equip any of these dudes with stuff? Because I know that's a common old strat. Uh, no. 
Maybe you didn't. You may have not. Oh no, you, you equipped these dudes with it, right? Or maybe you don't. I thought, no, I think you'd equip a friar with them, wouldn't you? Isn't that the traditional strat? Uh, yep, yeah, there it is. Bow of War. Yeah. There it is, so, you know. Uh, yeah, he's got some Bows of War for sure. So, that's neat. This is a big, terrifying army. How would I fight this? Uh, I feel like he would not like Lightning Bolt. I feel like, like, I feel like, like, Thunderstrike and stuff, he would not like. I think that would be a necessity. Um, I'm curious to know if Iron Blizzard gets screwed with. It may, it may not. I have no idea. Interesting. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. I'll have to look at that. Um, but my monk got killed, so that's neat. Um, now, I don't know, I'll look at it later. But, you can see here we're moving these troops up here. We're gonna move them back down and I'm gonna teleport my god in here. Now what I actually should have done is waited another turn. So let me tell you what I was thinking. So I can see that he's got like an army here or whatever. I kind of thought he might put him on patrol. So I'm gonna teleport my god in over here and then just attack here, right? Because whenever I saw him fight against, uh, whenever I saw Aramor fight against Jotunheim, he put his army on patrol on his cap. So I'm thinking he might do the same again. So Grace Kelly, she's got herself a, a robe of missile protection. She's got herself a skull staff. Uh, you can see she's going to be scripted to cast Battle of the Spheres, uh, Power of the Spheres, Chorus Master. I have Eagle Eyes on here. I think that's going to change to uh, Poison Resist. And then uh, it's going to happen this turn, right? Because on this turn I'm still down to Turgy 5. But next turn I'm going to switch over from Dust to Dust. I'm going to switch that over to um, Wither Bones. So we can wreck some dead. Reinforcements with Wolford are coming in. Sitting in Geo in here. A Go in here. I don't know how to say her name. But anyway, that's what is happening. And uh, that's pretty much what we got going on. Now, that's turn 33. This is going to be a long episode, looks like. Uh, but away we go. Let's go ahead and hop on over to turn 34. So this is happening, man. Things are popping off. That was a devastating battle that I almost fought. I almost want to watch it again. I mean, it was just Iron Blizzard and those Clockwork Cores just tearing into everything. Um, yeah, those Fire Elementals didn't do jack, huh? Uh, so I do a lot of research. Uh, so, oh, side search, I'm sorry. And I find some stuff, not a ton. Thaumaturgy, hit six. That's a big one. Implications there. Infiltration Marion, you successful. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Since we've just decided, you know what, we're just gonna cruise. Um, let's look at our Uh, let's do something like, yeah, look at this. God. That is bad. That is not good, man. Golly. <sighs> How am I doing next to Ulm? Yeah, Ulm is gonna be real strong. So now I'm concerned that Alma's just going to devour Marinia. And, and I don't see any reason why he wouldn't after that crushing victory. Um, so, jeez. That is terrifying. Um, and Facia is really big and strong, so that's excellent news for them. Um, so yeah, so all I'm going to do at this point in time is Bjorg is just going to go here, and we're just going to push right here, right now. Now, seeing that he's got his army here, I'm actually not convinced that this is the right move. So I, I, I think my god should have, I think Grace Kelly should have stayed back. That's what I think. I think Grace Kelly should have stayed back because I don't want to tip my hand and have him run into uh, to Magic Duel. Because what he would probably do, what I think he could do, is he could go uh, take his god because we know he has magic resist, we know he has astral magic on his god. Put him in magic duel, and then it's just a coin flip. And if that flips bad for me, 
then well so it's kind of two coin flips right because so first there's um brag one brag one here she's gonna be casting howl now she might be the one that's targeted by magic Queen. in which case um it's a little worse than a coin flip that she'll die she'll probably die but maybe she might live or maybe she might die and kill the uh the demi -touch, which is acceptable um but we don't want grace kelly to die but she might die she might get caught uh if if she hits if if if, if the demi -Lich magic duels and hits grace kelly it's a coin flip it's just a dead i roll a d6 you roll a d6 if we tie if we tie we both die you know loser takes a thousand damage so that's quite spookifying i still think i would win with this but yeah i decide to push it because um because his army's right here and i want to siege it down as hard as fast and, and as fast as possible and maybe he won't notice chris kelly's there and also maybe he doesn't have evocation three he may not and like i said i don't think he has a lot of research so i don't know how hard he could shift into it right it's like 300 was it like 400 research points to get to uh, evocation three so i don't know realistically that he could do it but so it goes um we're gonna continue our push deep into enemy territory and that's really all that's gonna happen we've got some troops that are getting shifted around here as i'm recruiting more landless knights um more knights of avalon i'm taking some of my uh some of my knights of man and bringing them over here to this front um i'm gonna spend some more money to try and keep ferris online because ferris is making me cool magic items particularly he's made me a crystal matrix and a crystal coin and he's gonna make some more um uh you can see we've got quite a few gnomes and we're casting uh gnome gnome lore and that sort of thing to try and find more earth gems that's really about all we've got going on what's gonna happen next is that the knights of the chalice are gonna try and rally up and gather around marignan to try and defend the cap um so anywho but uh let's go ahead and top uh hop on over to turn uh Turn number 35, so. Let's just try and get this episode done, huh? Turn 35. Kapow. So. Lots more site searching happening. I mean. Uh, Banner Log's got some stuff going on there. We infiltrate Satis. Uh, you can see that the, the inevitable march of... Um, the inevitable march of of Ulm is occurring now. And this is our battle over uh Aramor. So we can take a look here. And he doesn't he doesn't patrol it. This is just his province defense. So you can see we are going to absolutely annihilate this army. And we're gonna use all of our all of our magic gems too. We saw a little bit happen out there. Oh. Yep, there's where having the swarm killing stuff. Very cool. So yeah, but that was just nothing. That was some chaff. It's not really a huge deal there. Um So we've lost a thousand guys from the Shadow Glade. The Shadow Glade is just a very happy place where you definitely want to live. Um some annoying guys have showed up and attacked me. We got a fireball and some monies. And uh, rituals are cheaper this month. As you can see, some vine ogres attacked, but my Amazons held strong. Which makes sense since I freaking died uh, fighting them. Uh, these these and th these horse tribe cavaliers, man, they are they are stout. They they have held up to a lot of problems. How did they win this battle? I don't even know. Oh, that's right. These aren't real. These are fictional fucking banks. These are figments of our imagination. Ow. Fascinating. Oh, wow. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> this hero. Oswulf. I need to recruit Oswulf into my army. Uh, in the turn I'm in now, I'm going to name a guy Oswulf. Just, I mean, because what a... <laughs> the, 
the chain lightning or whatever, the lightning orb killed like a lot of my guys and his. So his guys went away. And then it was just my his cloud mage and Oswolf here. And Oswolf was just chasing him down. <gasps> what a legend. Oh man. That's awesome. But anyway. Uh, so yeah, so now we're starting to siege down the, the walls of Airmore. Um, and, uh, yeah, there it is. Um, they're severely destroyed. And, uh, next term, hopefully we'll be able to storm the castle. And maybe win this, uh, this war nice and quick. Or maybe we won't. We'll have to see. Uh, otherwise, you can see that uh, Beatrix is coming in with uh, more troops to reinforce the front. Uh, you can see we've got quite a lot of knights, quite a lot of landless knights, and a pretty stout crew. You know, we're going to cast Power of the Spheres, like I said before, to get that uh, that astral magic up. Then we're going to go to Communion Master and then Poison Resist. Um, yeah. So, quite a productive series of turns. Um, we did get to maintain uh, Ferris, and now we're actually going to use him to kind of arcane probe a little bit, uh, just because we don't want him to go away ever. And uh, hopefully, we can start finding some astral sites and start uh, generating actual astral pearls. That would be quite helpful to us. I'm wondering if I shouldn't just make him make more matrices. It's tricky. It's tricky stuff. It's tricky stuff. Uh, as this goes on, I'm gonna just dance around with basically these, this three things of enchantment, alteration, and construction in a schizophrenic way uh, until I come to some sort of a conclusion. As far as Satis is doing, you can see that he's taken some hits. Um, he seems to be kind of losing a little bit of his provinces. And you can see that uh, Vanheim seems to be gaining a little bit, but it's not drastic. And if we look at army size, like Satis's army is going up and Vanheim's is kind of struggling a little bit. So. Since this might actually be doing okay in that war, it's hard to say. Ulm has a colossal army that's taken a lot of losses, right? I mean, even though he's stepped on Marignan's face um, right here, he's still taking heat. Uh, Facia is just getting huge and is probably going to be scratching for a fight pretty soon. But uh, we'll see. Hopefully it won't be with us. But, I mean, why would it be, right? He has, like, no provinces he could realistically take from us. Um, uh... We can see that Naba and uh, Jotunheim, I kind of feel like they're at war. Like, I feel like you took this from him. I feel like you took this from him, Naba. But I don't really understand what the heck is going on. I, I, I truly don't understand what's going on with Naba. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. Right now, my, my primary focus is on, is on the war with Aramor. And that's about it. Um... I don't really know if there's a lot else I can realistically say about it other than we're trying to research lots of troops, trying to get our magic together, trying to maintain a good research pace at 955, which is pretty good. Uh, and uh, yeah, I guess we're going to go ahead and have to call it there. Uh, a a, a Jelric has regrown his arm, which he's pretty excited about. Um, and uh, yeah, anyway, that's the end of the turn. Uh, next episode, you guys will get to see uh, the Great Battle of Airmore. And uh, do the armies of the dead hold off man? Uh, hold off the living for a third time? Or is man going to be the nation uh, that brings the Night King to his knees? Find out next time. Uh, thanks for watching. Take care.